Welcome to this week's Into the Wilderness podcast. I am one of your hosts, Daryl Pace, and the other host is Byron Pace, who is sitting opposite me on the sofa today. This is going to be a podcast. It's, it's about us. I was going to say it was a podcast <laughs> from Scotland, but about Norway. Yeah, yeah, and a few other things, but yeah, mainly Norway, mainly well, Norway. I mentioned it um, in the last show, because in the last show I was by myself. It was a very last minute show that was put out all about the situation of tar in New Zealand. I haven't the, listened to it. Oh, you haven't listened to no, it? No, I because haven't listened to it. For the very I, I, couldn't, I couldn't download it to listen to it. So for the first time, a podcast has gone out that I haven't edited and I've not even listened to it yet. I think it worked. It's the first time I've ever edited a podcast. Obviously, I do a lot of editing with the film, but I think it worked. Uh, we recorded it after Daryl left for Norway. Uh, and just a very brief update on that. It seems, as it stands right now, that all of that hard work that everybody put into it uh, from New Zealand, from around the world, signing petitions, the film that we put out, all combined, and the government have relented. So um, the the numbers that I read from the press release from the New Zealand Tar Foundation was that they had come to an agreement and this year they were going to cull 6,000 tar with a view to culling 4,000 next year and putting in a proper management plan uh, that looks at habitat damage and assessment. Sounds, so, like, sounds like more sensible numbers. <laughs> so they, they have it. it I does was very work, very pleased. It, it, it to does see that. it does work if if things are done correctly. You can sway the way that politicians think yeah. and and force them to do something, which is something that the UK and not just the UK, other parts of the world need to learn from because a lot of effort went into that in New Zealand. Huge amount. There was massive global support. And we have our own issues on our doorstep right now and we are going to be looking at them in upcoming shows. I have um, someone from the GWCT in Wales um, scheduled um, to come on to the podcast to talk about the issues in Wales right now with the, the banning of uh, driven shooting on public yeah, publicly gonna, owned lands. We're going to dig into so that. It's, a, it's already on the cards, it's already in progress, but we just haven't had time to record it yet. But that is coming up. It's because we've been very busy and we have a number of guests coming up. Uh, in oh the, man, in, we in have the, some exciting guests. We've got guests. some really cool guests coming up in the next couple, couple of weeks. So that, I can mention three of them. Yeah, we can I've written, I've written, written, actually written them down. I wrote them down so yeah. I didn't forget. Uh, we've got the probably the highest profile, biggest name that we've got coming on is going to be Ed Stafford. Yes, very cool. I'm actually holding his brand new book, which is not even out yet. Is it actually not? No, it's oh, on I... pre-order only. We're 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 oh, one of the lucky lucky people. It arrived in the post this morning. Uh, Adventures for a lifetime. That's what it's called. Mm. And um, I've I've had the pleasure of meeting Ed once before. And we've had his wife Laura Bingham on uh, the show. Yeah, probably. About. I'm assuming she. No, maybe she hasn't changed her second name. Maybe she has because her her Instagram profile is still, still Laura, Laura Bingham. Bingham. I'm not sure. Yeah, but when we anyway. had her on, I don't know if she was actually married at that point, was she? No, she wasn't married. She no. was flying back like the week after yeah. getting married or something crazy like that. We need actually need to get her back on the show, uh, but. Actually, their adventure is talked about in this book. At the very back, the very back. Uh, very back of it, yeah. Uh, so if you don't know who Ed Stafford is, go and check him out. Uh, definitely watch his uh, films that he's made. He's done a few of them. Uh, one of the best ones was him trekking through the Amazon jungle for two years. First person to, I think, do like all the way across the whole... Epic. Uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty epic. It was actually quite a long time ago, but it doesn't feel like it. Yeah, I know. So we, we've been big fans of his for, for a long time, yeah. and it was pretty cool to have the opportunity to get this book sent to us, like Daryl said before, it's in the actually in the bookshops, yeah. and get him on to talk about the book and his life. So I think that's going to be sometime in November, so you'll probably see that podcast out probably later in November. And and the address was just... <laughs> this was very in, cool. Into the wilderness. <laughs> into the wilderness and the rest of our address. That's yeah. how it arrived this morning. Yeah, I like it. Uh, we've also got the guys from Brother Film coming on. Now, if you don't know Brother Film, they are behind a lot of the Red Bull film. Yes, they are. Not, not. I mean, they don't just do Red Bull no. films, uh, but 
some of some of the best films, especially ones to watch out for when they come out. You always look at them. Uh, these guys are in charge of, and what's very interesting is their filmmaking path. Oh yeah, it's and fashion. actually how similar it is to ours. So we can't wait to have those guys on. Who else are we having on? Uh, the last there. one that I wrote down here was we've got the and this is imminently this is starting next week. Uh, we've got the Peak Brothers coming on, who are fishing gillies. Oh, we've not had them on up before. in the D side. No, four so, four brothers potentially. Yeah. So <laughs> if we, I'm here, <laughs> we're going to be doing that next week, and we're going to be talking a little bit about them, their story, but also importantly, um, Atlantic salmon in Scotland and the issues around that. Uh, and we do have another podcast planned on a very similar topic, uh, probably going to be with uh, Corin Smith, who we've actually spent quite a lot of time with in the last year, on West Coast salmon farms. So, Lots and lots Whew. coming up. The year, the year is fast approaching. You know what? It was actually the birthday of the podcast, and we missed it. We missed it this year. Did we? Yeah, it was in it was September. August, was it? No, September. it was September the 24th or something. Happy birthday to uh, us. Happy, three happy, years. happy birthday. Three years. Three years of people listening to this show. If you have been with us, <laughs> if you've been we, with us for the we know for there three is. years, there we is. know there is, yeah. Please send us a message. Send us a message and you can have a podcast sticker. Yeah, if you've listened <laughs> since since day one. You've got to be honest to us with us. Yeah. Though. But we know we actually genuinely do know of a, quite a few people off the top of our head who have messaged us from like day one. Uh, if you are one of those people, send us a message because, like, well, thanks. It honestly <laughs> doesn't feel like it. Uh, yeah, it's, yeah, doing this. it's it's actually a little bit cringeworthy when you listen to the early shows. I haven't like, listened, like, to like them. you know, one or two because you know you're just starting out and you, it's you grow. Hard. And yeah, it's hard. It's it is. It's hard. And when they first shows, I mean, it's not like we were trained in radio presentation or anything. No, some would say we're still not. <laughs> <laughs> still not. No. no, but yeah, we're very pleased that you're still with us. We hope we haven't lost too many people along the way. No, um, well, no I mean, the, and that's. I think it's largely to do with our guests and the variety of people that we have on and, and keep bringing on. And we promise you, next year we are trying to. We are in the process of making the show better, bigger, and yeah, just more content that's what we want to provide that's what we're going to try and do and uh, we are pretty confident that at some point at the start of the next year we will be putting out more videos related to the podcast so actually recording the podcast because the, chat and stuff. the room behind where we're sitting right now <clears throat> which is currently an office will be empty and will be a recording studio so we're gonna get like that egg boxes and then uh, some of that foam to make it look like a proper studio so that we can't hear the dogs so barking, hear dogs barking. <laughs> uh, but you know the plan is to actually have a proper sit down kind of sh- a permanent studio that we can bring guests in and yeah that's the plan and hopefully our biggest aim is to have a big enough budget that we can actually fly some people in so. yeah, eventually when we're as big as Joe Rogan yeah eventually but I well, mean, we can fly uh, Joe in I mean, yeah. <laughs> fly Joe in. but I mean it, you know talking about budget you don't really because we were talking about today like uh, our time is kind of short but to fly someone from London a lot of people are from London it's not that expensive no, it's, it's like 50-60 quid and you could record it in a day and but it makes a big difference but it does make a big to difference to us yeah it makes a big difference in the way that it's delivered and when you're face to face with someone it's yeah, it's a way totally better conversation. different conversation I saw today, or actually late last night, while I was reloading ammo, which I'm going to be testing once we finish this podcast for, um, I'm going stalking next week for stags, and I needed to get some new ammo for a rifle, which I haven't developed any for. But when I was, uh, I was listening to podcasts last night while I was loading ammo, and Ben O'Brien, who was a guest, a couple of guests back. Three or four ago. Yeah. Uh, finally was able to announce what he couldn't <laughs> announce on our podcast, although we did get a slight inside track. So we, we knew, but we couldn't say anything. Yeah, that uh, was he, all fair. <laughs> that was all fair. Uh, he's team forces with Steve Ranella, who most of you will have probably heard of. Um, I think it's on the, Netflix. Yeah, it, the well, new, the, new, the new, meter, the eater. new meter, yeah. Netflix original. Well done, Steve. Impressive to get a hunting, a pure hunting, you know, hunting adventure eating wild food series as a Netflix original is impressive. Yeah. Uh, but Ben O'Brien has joined forces with him. I think the company, if I remember rightly, is called Meat Eater Incorporated. Uh, and him and April Voki and is it Eduardo Garcia? Yeah. They've all, and there's a couple of other people as well. They won't be well. going to many um, vegan conventions with that <laughs> no, name, will they? No, they won't. 
Um, so they've all joined underneath this umbrella, and I think we're going to probably see some pretty awesome content. From yeah, them. I hope so. I hope so. Uh, and yeah, it's it's exciting, exciting times. For Very them. exciting. Uh, we have Recoil a winner. Competition. I was just going to say. Yeah, we have a winner from uh, the competition two weeks ago. But I also mentioned it last week in our kind of interim podcast on Tar. I, I can't believe how many people entered this. Obviously, no one has a doormat <laughs> <laughs> because the competition was it to is, win. It's been one of the the biggest entries in competitions that we crazy. had for for a while. Actually, yeah. uh, so it, it was a CZ doormat, a yeah, black yeah. doormat with <laughs> we have CZ, more of these to give away. Yeah. <laughs> CZ firearms written on the mat, and I just took it outside here and it had a picture of my feet on it. We've got another five or six, and so in the next competition that we're going to announce in a minute is also going to be for one, because clearly everybody wants one. Uh, and we wanted to see a picture of you and your dog companion. <laughs> and we had some great entries. There but were some bloody brilliant entries. There were some lovely pictures, but the one that tickled us the most, <laughs> that was just simply awesome, was a picture of a guy lying down behind his rifle with a bulldog sitting French beside bulldog. him. French bulldog. With ear defenders on. And like it was spotting. <laughs> uh, and it was Luke Little. So congratulations, Luke. Uh, that was just a bloody brilliant picture. So you win the CZ doormat. But if you're all now gutted because you didn't win the CZ doormat, don't worry. We're There's giving away one. another one. There's another one. Uh, and it's going to be very, very simple. We're not even going to want a picture or anything. Just simply share the social, the next social media post that goes up about the CZ doormat mm-hmm. uh, and if you don't use social media then just send us an email send us an email say please enter me into the competition yeah, and we'll do that we're fair we're fair with everyone you know i was just sitting here thinking you know what i just made a really nice cup of coffee genuinely it's one of the nicest cups of coffee yeah. i've made in a wee while and i was admiring my mug because the mug that i have in my hand is a thunderbirds argo mug which i think is about 20 years old because i think it was probably one of our mugs when we were children uh, it is yeah in fact, do you know what? You might not be able to remember, but I think I can remember being in a shop and buying that with with mom. Really? Yeah, and I, I it was I think it was in the old Woolworths in Brecon, and, and they were like, I want, the, of, I want, I want no, the we both got one. I, I got I can't remember who got what. No, because I was the th- I was a big Thunderbirds because we had two. There was a dinosaur one, a Thunderbirds one. So no, about the same time, yeah, they're very they were similar both style. About the same style. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's where that came from. I think it was the old Woolworths. I'm, years ama- ago. I'm amazed it's still going, and I I genuinely think the reason why it's still going is that our father likes to leave mugs around the garden, like when he's like doing the vegetable garden, and sometimes they can live <laughs> out there. He for likes up, for, to leave mugs, yeah, yeah, for up to a year. Yeah, so it's protected outside. It just sits there for a year somewhere, and then it's also clean. quite colourful, so it will get. Yeah, it does. It is a good mug. I've actually got another mug talking about mugs. It's a Crash Bandicoot mug, which must also be about 15 years Where is old. That? We got it in South Africa. Uh, I, th- I think it was yours actually. Um, and the other day, I was almost horrified because I poured uh, um, some hot boiling water to make a cup of tea in it, and a crack appeared <gasps> on the side of it. And I thought it was gone, and it was a little bit leaking, but it seems to have self repaired itself, and it's not leaking anymore. But yeah, it, it will explode one day. But I'm not going to throw it away because they're cool mugs. They you don't can- make they don't make good mugs like this anymore. Apart from our metal mugs that we sell. Of course. (laughs) People tuned in to listen to an outdoors podcast and now they're hearing about mugs from our childhood. Thunderbirds, (laughs) Arco, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, Just as a a finishing note about Thunderbirds, I was very disappointed with the the new revamp of Thunderbirds, which was all like animated. It's all animated now. They don't do puppets. Yeah, they don't do puppets. I I don't think there's many puppet shows. Maybe Sesame Street, but that's different. Yeah. That's like... That's like um, different. The, pu- the the strings. No, I was going to say the strings are the opposite. It's not really. It's a hand. It's, up. A, it's a hand up the puppet, opposed <laughs> opposed to the hand strings above the puppet, uh, dangling above it. So we decided what we were going to do on this podcast uh, was to, well, me basically speak to Daryl because although he's been home for a couple of days, I actually haven't. Apart from seeing a few pictures that he's been editing um, in between other jobs in the office, I haven't really had a chance to have a conversation with him about his trip that he was on for like seven or eight days, whatever it was, seven days, uh, last week to Norway. So we were going to talk about that. Yes, it was exciting. It was your first moose hunt. Yeah, well, it was the first, yeah, my first ever experience of any kind of moose hunting. And and it was was different to what I thought because I'd seen quite a few videos online and I'd also seen um, the, the, obviously the pictures of what you had experienced and the film of what oh, the you one had Sweden. experienced in Sweden, mm. and it is nothing like that. 
I can assure you it is nothing like that of any of the videos because the, what I kind of expected, um, I had been to the place before. So I kind of had a rough idea. I'd been up to the, those that mountain range before. You were there on holiday, weren't you? Yeah, but I didn't really know fully where all of the hunting was because I was skiing and stuff. I wasn't doing anything. Um, and I thought from the videos it would be, you know, you let, let the moose dog go and then it would be off, off you go. You stand around. You stand around and you wait for some barks. Because all of the pictures that I had previously was a big, thick forest. Yeah, it's, it, there is forest. I, I, I'm not speaking for the whole of Norway. I'm just talking about this particular area that I was in, which was uh, a big valley, and it is a hunting ground uh, owned by various people, and basically it's a community hunting event because all the ground's owned by effectively stakeholders, and they all um, join together as a club, and they hunt the ground together, and then the meat is shared out. Um, but I can go into that in a little bit. Uh, so yeah, so basically, I thought it'd be a bit like the the Sweden thing, and it's not at all. It is a little bit more like deer stalking in a way, uh, where like here, a little bit like that, where uh, you, where we were, you sit in the kind of lower ground, looking up into the mountain. So and a bit you, like we spy yeah, for red deer. So you spot, and they'll spot for two hours, three hours All right. before they even start because... But is this everyone together or is everyone spread out in different places? But, uh, on the first day, everyone was together. Yeah. But then later on, people were going in different spots. Some people were climbing a little bit higher up um, and finding different angles. It's so, it's so big. You can't spot from one place. And once you spot an animal, it's still not even, oh, there's an animal, let's go, because you've got to be so specific with what you're allowed to take that you need to spend another 30 minutes deciding maybe it's the right one. deciding it's the right one if you can't see properly, getting someone into a position that can see if it's the and right one. And is everyone on radios? Yeah, th that's the thing. Is everyone is talking. To, even if people are not even hunting, in their houses, they all have radios <laughs> listening. Yeah, the whole valley is listening. Like Even the hunters in the valley's opposite are listening to what, what what's happening. What What's happening. Oh, very cool. Uh, but just but backtrack just a minute because I feel like I'm kind of running away, running away mm -hmm. with the story. When I want to find out when you first arrived, what it was, you obviously got to meet everybody who was going to be involved in it. I mean, how many people were you yeah, talking? So how I did mean, it work? Initially, initially there was, when I arrived, actually, they were in the middle of the meeting in the garage. Was this like pre-hunt meeting? No, genuinely, yeah. But I mean, it's talked about for months before. Really? Yeah, the whole plan is talked about for months. And then the big the night before, it's the big build up. And all the, in Norwegian, I'm all, guessing, yeah, so all in, all in Norwegian. <laughs> uh, but I mean, they're so good. I, I guess as well that I I've been there a few times. I know them, and they they don't really give a second thought about like translating something for me. So, so like, if you're like listening and if they're then. listening, one of them will just turn around and say, "This is what we're talking about." Oh, okay. So it's kind of quite nice. And you know what is interesting? By the end of the week, there's you actually start to learn. There is a lot of similar words in Norwegian that translate to English almost the same thing. Or Scots. Or actually. Scots, yeah. yeah. A lot of Scottish words. And yeah, okay, you can't understand the full sentence, but you actually know what they're talking about. You can pick up enough. You can, you know, there's enough one or two key words where you go, actually, they're talking about going up onto that hill for for this reason. And you and yeah, okay, you don't know the ins and outs of it fully, but you know what's gonna happen. But that's at the end of the week. <laughs> <laughs> so at the start, yes, it's like the blind. Uh, but I mean, we've spent a lot of time in Norway and with Norwegians now. But yeah, fortunately, most of them speak exceptionally oh, good exceptional. English. Oh, Even the ones that go, my English isn't very good. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's 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 pretty damn it's good. It's better than ours. Yeah. Yeah, it, but it's amazing though because you, if you do speak to them, I know we're, we're sidetracking here. We're talking about language now, but if you do speak to them, like uh, Lisa's parents, who I stayed with, uh, her parents. The last time they spoke English was when I was there in... Six months ago. Yes, More than that. Six months ago. ago. Yeah. And before that, it would have been 10 years. And wow. they speak it fluently almost. Like, it's it, very little pause. I can and, barely remember a word of German from yeah. high school. <laughs> it's crazy. But, I mean, I guess what does help is... I mean, even when I was sitting in the house, it wasn't because I was actually there. 
Uh, it was the TV was Big Bang Theory, How I Met Your uh, Mother, really, and a lot of American programming. So uh, well with, in English. with um, Norwegian subtitles. So a huge amount ah. of what they watch is actually English. Anyway. So you're continually hearing it, but reading it, and yeah. then your brain starts to process it. Yeah. So. so maybe we need to start watching programs in another language with English subtitles. Well, I was I was actually told that now they start learning English at six years old there, well. in preschool. That's only just started there. So that's quite. It's quite uh, quite a young age. I mean, if they did it in this country, then probably people, yeah, probably you people would pr- probably speak some more uh, different languages, which would be more useful. Anyway, I sidetracked. So, so you got there in the meeting? Got there, meeting was going on, and they were kind of discussing the plans for, for the, the following day, because uh, it's kind of like they take a day at a time. Because You arrived on Sunday. Yeah. No, no, you left on Monday. Monday, but I was there Monday afternoon, yeah. and the the season opened on the Tuesday morning. So yeah, the plan was made on the on that evening, and we then woke up the next morning at four a.m. And nice and sharp. Yeah, it was. I was also up at four a.m. <laughs> four a.m. on that day because I was on the foreshore. Yeah, it was quite horrendous. I hate <laughs> that time in the morning. It was like between four and five thirty every day we did, uh, and yeah, it was a case of of spotting and and moving. And on the first day, uh, a calf was shot. They had one calf, so they they had five animals. They were allowed in the whole season, that's and they, it. that's done by they they do some sort of census, don't they? The previous season, or? yes, yeah, yeah, and they it's get go- told it's government in that area you can shoot yeah. X, yeah, yeah, and but it's yeah, it's five, and so it has to be one calf, uh, one bull, uh, one uh, cow, and then I think the other two are the next, like those two are like kind of almost any age range. And then the other two are two and a half years and four years or something. Okay, so yeah, it's very, it's, it's very, very specific. specific. Yeah, so you could actually not fill your quota because you can't find the correct animal. Not because you haven't seen animals, but because yeah, you haven't found, you not the, found one. the correct one. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and yeah, so we they actually found um, a calf on the first day, which they did they did take, and that actually happened very quickly. As Were you that, there? Yeah, yeah, I was there. Um, that happened in the first by lunchtime on the first hmm. day. And yeah, that one was taken off the the ticket uh, straight away, which uh, I guess was well good a, for the community because they want the meat, don't they? Yeah, they do. And how the, did the sharing happen? So they, I mean, did they do that afterwards? Is it like a communal hangs, freezer? It or? hangs for a few days, and then I think it gets divvied. So I wasn't there when any of the meat was actually shared, give, shared away, but I did ask how it worked, and it was dependent on how much land you owned in the. In the hunting like the area. Oh, okay. Yeah. So the more land you have, the bigger you get. And <laughs> also, if you shoot the animal, you get the first pick of like the tongue and things like that. But they all take the tongue away with them. They yeah. they eat a lot. So there's of nothing stuff. left. I mean, they don't eat the liver, uh, but they really? take the heart. Don't yeah. like liver yet. We no. take the liver off the hill. Yeah, no, they none of them. They just. I wonder if there's a reason with strong. moose there. I mean, maybe I don't know. Yeah. No, none of them seem to like the idea of it. No. No. I'll have to find out more about that. I wonder if there's actually an issue with it, with moose. I've never it heard of fine. an issue. It looked fine to me. It's big, though. The liver is huge. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, like, it's just on a different scale. When you look at it, like, the calf was probably, would be a red stag. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah probably a medium-sized red stag. Yeah. A, like a hill uh, stag. A medium, t- yeah. W- I wouldn't say it was a large one, but it was a medium size. And then your... Um, your cow, I think it's called a cow, is it? Yeah, yeah. yeah it is. The cow, that would be probably the size of a uh, fairly sized, like a mid sized horse, yeah. maybe. And then the bull is a big, it's the size of a horse or it's a big huge. horse. But it's like it's, a Clydesdale, it, isn't it? Yeah, not maybe as tall as not a Clydesdale, as tall as Clyde, but, but, but bigger, powerful, much more powerful, a lot more chunkiness on it. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I think that's the best way to describe it because they do have kind of horse-like features as well. So yeah, yeah they they've got this weird like really, shovel, yeah, on really the... long nose and huge ears on them. So, so what happened at the end of? Um, I mean, there must have been a lot of happy people when the the calf was coming back. Yeah, I mean, day I, one did did the hunting kind of stop to deal with the calf or not? As soon as something is is shot, everyone stops. Nothing else can be taken. I think that's basically the the rule. No one shoots anything else while an animal is in the process of being <laughs> taken off the hill just because people need help. How many people are you talking? Uh, on the first day, there was 10. Okay, ten not people. quite as many as I imagined. Uh, and the day so like that, 10 people shooting? 
Yes, ten people out shooting. Plus extra bodies. Yeah, plus one or two extra bodies like me taking pictures. And uh, then, yeah, so it stops. And then, depending on what time of day, then it carries on again. People go back out. And, uh, I mean, in fact, I told you about this this earlier when we were sitting down. Because there's a lot of sitting involved. Because the, what they'll do is, if they can spot an animal... Because they can run so far, so fast. It's it's unbelievable how fast they can run. They'll, They're built for that terrain. Yeah. They'll basically have sitting posts up the side of the mountain, and they'll know roughly where it can run, and then someone will stalk into it, and those posts are there for if it moves. Well, you mean literally like a wooden post? No, no. People, oh, are, no. They call it a post, oh, someone standing there, basically. But it'll probably be places that they historically know. Historically yeah. know where it can run to, and it basically means that either if the moose moves or gets scared it is going to run past one of these people but it's also a safety thing if someone takes the shot there's someone as a backup just in case just in bad case shot. bad shot and there's another person to take the shot so that is how it works which means that there's a lot of walking and then also a lot of sitting down and not doing a huge amount uh, which is last week it was particularly cold was, early snow you said yeah uh it snowed from day one no i actually there. said to daryl this was about two days before he left said oh, is it gonna be snow there oh no no i asked them that question and, and they, said, uh, no. they said no <laughs> no it's no <laughs> it snowed from the first day i arrived um which you know what i i was prepared and i did actually bring some proper stuff with me i was probably marginally cold in a few days what were you kitted out with uh, what did you take? Normally, I would know because we're normally traveling together. But uh, so my normal boots. Um, yep. And I was wearing Swazi gaiters, which I regret taking. Actually, they didn't work for for that terrain. They just didn't work. Um, they they weren't. They're not waterproof. Mm. And because it's it was snow from basically the tree line up, and we were above the tree line a lot of the time on the mountain. Um, and then below, it was raining, so it was just a lot, a lot of being wet. And oh, I, I know who that, that's where that was our phone ring. I, I, I think I know who that was. I think it'll be Charles Post, actually, <laughs> who was a previous podcast guest, but I did say I probably wouldn't be about. Yeah, I'm just going to turn the iPad onto silent as well because I wondered what else was ringing. Uh, yeah, so uh, what was I talking about? That? Yeah, so I was wearing that, and then I was wearing my Fjall Raven trousers, which are fantastic yeah. i mean you've used them in anger now i haven't used i've used them it. in anger quite a few times and being able to regulate your heat and they're comfortable as well being able to zip down the sides regulate your heat it's just fantastic i never had a problem with my trousers at all the whole time i was there uh i had a waterproof over trousers which is a must i mean that combo of having trousers that are breathable that you can regulate your heat and then when you stop putting on waterproof trousers especially when you're walking a lot it's just, you can't beat that combination. I've pretty much decided that that's... For, yeah. I don't really bother... I don't bother Layers. at all with waterproof. Like, my, the trousers that I'm wearing all the time that you put on in the morning, I don't wear waterproof in. No, I... Because I, I, I wore waterproof... I made the mistake of wearing waterproof trousers, I think it was three weeks ago on the hills. because we were doing? We were together, weren't we? Yeah, or we were doing some stuff up the grouse shooting. Yeah, yeah. And I wore them, and within the first hour, I had made a mistake. I was wetter inside than I was on the outside. It just, for me, it just doesn't make sense. Mm, um, I sweat. I sweat too much. Waterproof over trousers. I'm with you on yeah. that one. And they don't even need to be expensive waterproof trousers. No, trousers. Twenty five quid. Twenty five quid. Before you left. Yeah. Uh, then on my top, my Swazi smock, which incidentally that's a tar, isn't it? Most people wore there. Yeah, I did notice that. Yeah, it seemed to be like every, a uniform. Honestly, it, it did look What like, does that tell you? It, it almost did look like a uniform, like it was a, a sponsored yeah. trip, but it wasn't. It just everyone wore those smocks. I mean, those guys wouldn't be, guys and girls wouldn't be using it if it didn't work. Yeah, and the fleece, actually, nearly all of them had the fleece. Swazi so fleece. they were walking in the fleece a lot of the time instead of the jacket. And then they'd put the jacket on when they go. Are up you to talking the top. about the what the the like fleecy jacket that looks yeah. like the same so it's, cut? It's a fleece smock. Yeah, I've seen. Yeah. It. I can't remember what it's called, but I don't. I don't have one, but yeah. it's awesome. Yeah. yeah. So they were wearing that. Um, I wasn't, and then I had my hat from Svalbard, which kept me cozy. <laughs> your possum it's hat. It's possum hat. Yeah. Uh, but on my but I was wearing layers, so I was wearing. Uh, you have your Klima layers? Did you yeah. Say? So I was wearing the Klima, the netted stuff, which is wicked. If you don't know what I'm talking about, it basically looks like fishnet tights. Yeah. Uh, but Joseph took the piss out of me <laughs> for wearing that in New Zealand because I, I, the one day we were on top and there was no wind and it was super warm, and I took my 
whatever jacket it was, that was probably the Swazi jacket. Yeah. Actually, I took that off and I just had my fishnets underneath, <laughs> which were which were blank on the chest, but like fishnet arms. The one yeah, that so I had the, on. Yeah, so the very top of the chest has got material. Yeah, and then it's fishnet down. <laughs> and he was like, "What are you wearing?" But the tr- you got the trousers as well, so yeah. it does look like proper fishnet. Uh, and I stuff. said, "Man, you have not lived until you've worn I'm, Scandinavian fishnets." Because you you always watch. You remember um, like the old programs? Was it da- not on uh, only, you, only fools and horses? Not it's of people now. You're, talk, you're, to, you're talking about like Rasby Nesbitt. Right, yeah, uh, wore, Rasby the, Nesbitt. Wore, wore the string, <laughs> string vest, vest, and you were like, "Oh, come on, that doesn't keep you warm." A string vest, like you look at your granddad or something, you wore, wore a string vest. <laughs> it's like, I don't understand. No, they were onto something, yeah. and that works because it regulates your heat so well. Because obviously, it's got holes in it, uh, but it traps you, the warm air. But it also traps the warm air. I love mine. Yeah, so I, I'm I'm a com- convert of that. Um, and it's not the first time I've worn it. Uh, we uh, that in Svalbard, which was minus twenty five, all I wore underneath my jacket was that a base snug layer. Pack jacket, yeah. yeah, that that was it. I just, same there, was, there was no big secret. It was a snug pack jacket and trousers and a base layer. That was all that we minus twenty five done done. Uh, so yeah, and then also another necessity you need, which um, I do actually own one, but the the added knitted bit's quite nice. Is the you know the little pads that you sit on the foam pads? The oh yeah, yeah, I've pads. got one. They all carry them, uh, but they all have home knitted uh, squares that you put on top. So it just adds that little extra. Did you have one with you? No, well, I was given one. Are you given one? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, I normally keep one in my rosac. Yeah, so, so you get wet ass. But you need uh, or a cold arse actually. No, no, it's <laughs> actually the cold yeah. that's more than because that smock is long enough to sit on, but it still let the cold through. Yeah. The cold, the cold through. Um, oh, there you go. So that's the gear. Yeah, that's, that's the gear. Um, but you, but you, because you weren't expecting to be quite so cold, you were a little bit cold. Yeah, you probably could have done because <laughs> I wore in New Zealand. I had uh, a synthetic down layer. That yeah, I had see, that probably would have fixed. You. I, I didn't bring that with. I was not expecting it to be minus one. Which it was at the top of the mountains, it was about minus one, and then even at the bottom, it was about zero and one degrees. And you know, going from Scotland here, which has been 12 degrees, for 12 to 14 degrees, and I even looked at the, the long, kind of long range forecast, and it did not say it would be snowing. <laughs> so it was a, quite a bit colder than I thought it'd be. But it, it doesn't matter. I mean, as long as you are as prepared as possible, you get through things mm. like that. It's fine. Absolutely fine. So, and on to day two. So day two, I'm trying to think. Okay, yeah, day two. Uh, that's when a bull was. Was shot. that the big bull? So yeah, so a big bull, and it was quite late in the afternoon. Actually, it was. We'd been walking up and down, up and down the mountain all day to give people a perspective of of this mountain. It's basically to get to the top is nine kilometers from the bottom. Nine. Wonder what the what, what the. Uh, the I'm, actual I'm climb not, was. I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure if I carried my my phone on me. I didn't actually check, but yeah, it's nine k's up. I mean, it's not it's not a gentle slope either. It's in some bits, it's you know all four holding onto rocks, pulling yourself up. I mean, there is tracks mm. going up, but not like the tracks we have on the hills in Scotland, which are well made. This is just either um, moose tracks or or people tracks mm. and. Uh, yeah, so we'd gone up and down the mountain. We were spotting. Was uh, this you and Lisa? No, this was actually me and her mum. Oh. Uh, we were we were spotting going up the mountain, and we kind of sat at the top for quite a few hours. And I'm talking the ve- almost the very top. And we were we spotted a few animals, and over the radio it came that one of the other guys that was basically on the opposite mountain to us, but it was part of the same mountain range. It curved round, so we were like opposite because we were quite a big curve in it. Um, he had shot a big bull. And it hadn't been shot well, uh, well enough, basically. And uh, they had to bring in the, the dogs then. And, and that's why they have awesome trained dogs. Yeah, and basically it was a scramble off the mountain. In that, in that scenario, everybody stops what they're doing and they go and find it. And it was about eight hours finding finding it and run, got running it. through, <laughs> running all over the mountain. We actually had to, it actually moved into a different part of the mountain range, which didn't belong to them. But I suppose there must be an understanding there if you're yeah, following up so the game. So they have to call the leader of the hunting ground of their, of that community 
and that community leader met us at like their mountain oh, really? and led us to where he thought it would be and and they and they actually helped with the extraction of Amazing. the animal farm. What an incredible <laughs> community cohesion. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely incredible. In fact, actually, it was one of the guys from the other hunting ground that actually took the last final two shots because he saw the the moose when he yeah. was yeah, huh. and then it was extracted out, out of there. On, on these mountains, there's two ways to get things down. Well, actually, no, three. I mean, no, there's two. There's two ways. So, on the lower part, you can kind of weave an Argo cat through it. I mean, they don't actually use Argos. It's more of like a six wheel quad bike. And they kind of weave it through the trees and stuff. Uh, if it's any higher than uh, basically where the snow line was, top of the, the tr- where the trees stopped growing, basically, uh, then it becomes a lot more mountainous. Then there's only one option, which is to cut it. And walk it out. Walk it out. Uh, I mean, they do say that sometimes they can, if it's a small off animal, they drag it down as far as they can so that the the vehicle can pick it up. But there's no roads going up. No, no. Up there, it's just. Uh, this, you know, there's the odd clearing where they've cl- cleared for the snow bikes in winter, and they can get some of the vehicles up there. But yeah, that's that's about it. So that was uh, that was day day two, day day two. Got the big bull. I mean, that must have been a. So that was late at night. Yeah. So by the time, I mean, because like I said, it was lunchtime when the shot was taken, and it was about eight hours. So it was six in the evening. Getting when, dark. Yeah, getting dark when when it was finally taken out of the forest and it was pitch black by the time it was brought back and that was kind of... But was it brought back whole? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, they were able to get a vehicle up to Yeah, they were able to get a vehicle. So what, did they drag it back on a sled or what? Uh, Kind of gets dragged... No, so what they did, they were dragged it to a road and then put it in a trailer and then drove it all the way back. How did they get it into the trailer? We we dragged it up. What, like 10 people or something? It was about eight people. Really? Yeah, eight people. You can't lift it. <laughs> no, no, yeah, that's why I'm asking, because <laughs> yeah, no. I've seen what these moose are like. No, I mean, no, you, huge. Can't, you, can't, you can't lift it. It was just a case of even I was part of the... Even, though I, was, even though I was taking pictures. Yeah. Um, hey, I, boy, I, you got a graph. <laughs> I was required yeah. for the, the moving of the moose. And then th- did they start processing it that night? Immediately. Really? So as soon as we got back, that that's it. And it's just, it's amazing, because it gets put back. In hung up in a garage, and that people just kind of surround it, yeah, and start working on it. Doesn't matter who you are, you so just start it, working it, on it. People just do it. It's not a, it's like a case of somebody instructing everybody. That's no, what no. you got to do. They just know what people their just, job is. People just start, regardless if you are even involved. Yeah, like people just come from the houses that with a knife in hand, with a and knife, and that's it. And then they just start, start butchering it. Basically, I mean, they they leave it up whole. Mm. Uh, for the for two days. One of the things I love, uh, I saw, I, th- I think I saw a picture. It might not have been one that you took. It could have been one that Lisa put up on on Instagram, and I experienced it when I was in Sweden. Is the the air drying of all the meat outside? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and that, that's great. It's 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 yeah. great to see. I mean, as a visual kind of spectacle of what you've just taken from the land. It's, it's awesome. like we're, you know, you, when when you've shot two animals like that, and later in the week three, you look at how much meat there is. It's just you know, you look at that. It's like three, and you look at that, and you think that's basically two whole cows, potentially three cows worth of meat. Yeah, like beef, like, like the equivalent beef, of beef, uh, cattle, beef, yeah. beef hanging hanging up there. And yeah, it's just insane the amount of, and you can understand why people do it because the meat prices. I mean, in fact, I was speaking to one of the guys, and he said it's actually very hard to get hold of good beef up there in the northern part of Norway. Well, they have to bring it in with it. Yeah, there can't be many cattle farms. I don't think there is any up there. No, what are they going to eat? What they're going to eat in the winter? Yeah, they'd <laughs> have to bring in. There's, so no, much there's food. no, there's no deer up there. No. Before the reason the winters are too hard, so I, I, it would, I think it would economically wouldn't be that viable because you would have to have cattle in sheds for potentially five months of the year yeah, yeah. six months of the year and feed them with something from the south yeah i think they do have some sheep up there because they do actually cut the some of the fields for silage so there must be something they farm up there i didn't actually ask i'm gonna ask the question now what they do farm you know i was looking actually they need to introduce some goats or something in those mountains they just they look perfect but maybe the winters are too hard it could be I mean, the snow is so deep. It's so deep when when you in the middle of winter. Uh, you need the long legs of the moose. I mean, that's why they can cope with it. 
but even the moose don't stay up there. Do they move out? Yeah, as soon as they get heavy snow, they are all gone to the lower ground. Huh. So even the moose don't stay there. So that's actually why they only have uh, they have a, I think until December or something the season closes. Yeah. But it's not actually the, that time restraint that's the problem. It's, it's the snow. snow. So as soon as the snow comes, the moose are gone. Huh. <laughs> so it's game over for them. Oh, it's, oh, it's incredible. It sounds like I mean. It, the atmosphere, what was that like? Oh, Can you compare it to anything? Because, you know, we have great atmosphere on hunts here, but it must be very different because it sounds so much more communal. Yeah, it, it is. Than anything we it really is. have uh, here. I think that, I think that, that, like all groups, there was obviously a few friction moments. Like people being lazy. <laughs> no, not being no. lazy, but I think people going off and wanting to do their own thing. Yeah. Or, you know, like, oh, I want to do this instead yeah. of this. I think that you get that with every group of of people but i think at the end of the day when all the hard work's done it's everyone's friends and you know during the day when people are spotting because there's cabins all over the place they'll be sitting together making hot chocolate and and that well i mean they don't really drink tea there so it's mainly as we we discovered coffee yeah Yeah. uh now the social aspect is something I'd I'd really like to experience, well, especially when it comes back. The social aspect because a lot of the the kids come. Yeah, no, you had some great pictures of a, a young kid who Arna. was hunting with, with his Arna. dad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and um, but not just him. There's actually there's other pictures of other kids. Like there was four or five ch- children. Uh, are they just come back from what school? What age are you talking about? Uh, f- well, from four years old to probably ten years old. Yeah. And they're all there with their own, their own knives, and they get given the moose legs. So all the moose legs get cut off, and yeah. then they get given one, and they work on them each to learn how to um, skin. skin. Oh, so they actually take it with the skin on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's their skinning. G- genuinely, that's what it is. And have all, you got pictures of that? Yeah, I've them got it. skinning yeah, the legs. Yeah, all skinning the legs. They all sit there, and they all learn learn how to do it. And wow. then the, the, some of the older kids actually help with the skinning of the, the animal as well. But they're learning from a very young age. A very young age. Wow. Yeah. It's just... For some people are lucky enough to experience that here in the UK, but not to the same extent. It sounds to me like the way that you've been describing it is certainly the, the, those northern regions of, of Norway. Everybody's partaking in something like that. I mean, was it... Do you think it was pretty much the whole community in that area? Yeah, I mean, there's not that many houses. That's what I mean. Yeah, yeah. I th- I would say that uh, I think there's maybe one or two people that were not involved out of the uh, all the people. Uh, but also, the you know what I quite liked about it? The kids, when you, you look at the kids, and you can tell when a kid is either not wanting to be there yeah, or they're like, bored. I want to go back and play my computer game. Th- that, you do not get that impression at yeah. all because they're asking questions and, and actually wanting to... So you think they no, would no, have been upset if they weren't involved? Definitely, definitely. Yeah. Like, they're asking, oh, can you sharpen my knife for me? Can I do this? <laughs> really? and, yeah, oh, what's this? What's that? How do you do this? And, yeah, you just don't really see that a huge amount here unless you're growing up with it. So, you know, a prime example is probably gamekeepers' children. Yeah. They're exposed to it. But these kids, you know, they're not exposed to it all year round. Because it, it is just part of their life. It's just life for them. That's it's... how they get food for the winter. <laughs> oh. And good meat. Yeah. And the meat's amazing, so I don't blame them. The moose meat is just something else. Did You You didn't eat any of the moose meat that were from that no, trip? No, but I you? got I, last, last, year, year. last season's moose meat. We, I know we we always so Lisa brought us some moose sausages last, which I, I actually bought, such I bought some more. Did you? Where's just, my moose just sausage? One, just one. I was I was running out of space, and it does cost about ten quid a sausage. <laughs> so. so you enjoyed the moose meat? Yeah, I, I every meal I have of moose is just special. Uh, it tastes so damn good. And what can, else did you eat there? Uh, cod. Oh, this is the de- the dehydrated cod, was it? Uh, no, this was just the salted salted cod. salted cod. Uh, it, yeah, all the food. There's nothing apart from that really smelly fish uh, <laughs> that I d- I haven't liked when I've been there. Well, you you mean the one that we had? Yeah, yeah. yeah that, that, See, that, I actually ate that. I thought yeah, that's disgusting. Right. <laughs> it, it was it was okay. You could just had to eat it with equal proportions of onion. <laughs> oh, Jesus, nightmare, <laughs> nightmare. I heard uh, Ben O'Brien describe peas. He doesn't like peas as the devil's balls. <laughs> Uh, you'll have to think of an equivalent for onions for you. Oh, they're just uh, the devil's pubes, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> horrendous. With, with a fish and onion, that would just be a nightmare. Rolled You'd be gagging, one. wouldn't yeah, you? Oh, that would be horrendous. But 
yeah, so I mean, th- that was the the week, and on the final, it wasn't even the final day. It was on the Friday actually. Uh, nothing was shot on the Thursday. It was just raining, and but we went out. Um, I think I averaged just to give people an example. I averaged twenty one kilometers a day. That's why, and I that's not flat. No, no, that's that's uphill for half of it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, that's a lot. That's a that's a lot. If I think back to like when we were doing our wilderness hunts yeah. with with um, with guests, we were probably averaging sixteen k a yeah. day, if I remember rightly. So it's a lot of walking. Yeah, twenty one k. I couldn't believe it as well actually because I I tracked all of my. Did you GPS it? Yeah, your GPS it. And yeah, twenty one k a day. It's pretty. It's pretty tasty in that in that environment because you get to the top and you're like, wow, I can't even just walk that. So and to give me an idea, I'm trying to picture the the kind of terrain that you're in. When you're up on on the top of the mountains, are you kind of looking down to the cabins that you left? Yes. So it's in like a like a giant bowl, bowl with jagged al- tops. Almost, yeah, yeah, like that. I mean, when you start getting actually higher, you actually cut lose sight of the cabins because the trees start to block the view and stuff like that. But uh, it's yeah, it it's open top so like just snow on the top and rocky terrain and then it moves down into the alpine and then lower is kind of a little bit arable field partial arable yeah course, partial yeah. just green grass that they 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 harvest but yeah the tra- it's not easy and particularly the last week because it was so wet mm. every step was just sodden it reminded me of here actually <laughs> uh it's not normal it's not normal, not normal for, them. for them no right. it's not normal for them uh, but yeah so nothing nothing was um nothing really happened on the, the thursday got some amazing pictures though because on the thursday i was sitting on the top and the light was just changing and and there was rain coming in snow coming in and when you've got a day like that where it's changing every 15 minutes it's kind of like a photographer's dream yeah. because every time you can take the same picture twice it looks totally it looks different, totally different. Mm. so yeah it was pretty cool on the thursday i managed to achieve that and then on the friday was the the big walk they actually said because we'd you know done some pretty big days and they said oh this is gonna be the biggest day walking on friday and i was you were like, like what <laughs> my legs were a little bit i was by the friday how was your knee by the way it was it was okay it was you fine. didn't notice any no, it, it, it was you know i i noticed that it gets a little bit stiff but i think it's more the cold than is the the walking uh, but then, yeah, the knee, it didn't give me any any problem. It was a bit tender, so I couldn't, like, kneel on anything. I could feel that it was a little bit more tender, but mm. if you're just walking, fine. It's fine. <laughs> fine. Good. So, last day. Yeah, so th- this was on the Friday. And on the, s- the Saturday, uh, basically, they said, oh, we're going to go grouse shooting, and I was going to go grouse shooting. Um, a little treat uh, yeah. for me. Uh, but they said, but if we shoot something up at the, the, the top of this mountain, uh, the, that we're going on the Friday, then there'll be no grass shooting because you've got to get all the meat. We've got to get the meat out the following day. I was, yeah, that's fair enough. Uh, and so we climbed and we climbed and we climbed and we climbed on the, the Friday. And the only way I can describe it, it was the back of a quarry. Mm-hmm. That's what it was. Like pretty sheer. Yeah. So basically, you climbed the mountain, and then there was the big bowl at the back, very yeah. glaciated features where you know a glacier would would have started its life. Uh, yeah, with a with a lake at the bottom, with a little it. tarn, yeah, yeah, and then some waterfalls and stuff, and that's where we shot it at the back of that thing. So it was like as far as you could go, but the reason why they go in there is the moose like to shelter in there, uh, uh, and there's only t- two ways out. So they know. So, so they know, but the downside is that if you shoot something there, it's an epic. Hump it's an out. epic <laughs> hump out, and yeah, basically, if you shoot something you have to come back the next day and get it because it's too far to go up and down uh, and it's treacherous. And they bring more people, I guess. Yeah, so yeah, we, we the animal was taken latish afternoon on the Friday, I would say probably 2, 3 o'clock. It was then cut up and then hung in a tree uh, because there's... Oh, so that's the pictures I saw yeah. of it hung in the tree. Yeah, yeah so it was cut up. So it was What in, was it? A cow? Uh, uh, yeah, it was, yeah. It was, yeah, so it was cut up, hung on the tree, so animals don't eat it. They do have some bears up there. Mm. Um, they, they, I did ask if anyone had ever seen them, and they said no, but they do have bear and lynx and foxes. Mm. So Plenty of things that could plenty scavenge. Plenty of things that you could, know. yeah, upset you if you came back and your meat was all gone. <laughs> that would be very depressing. So hung up in the tree, and the next day, uh, we went. We went down that day, and then we went back up the following morning, and yeah, carried it down. I didn't actually carry any meat. 
you were busy taking pictures. I was, take, I was busy taking pictures, but also there was enough people. But when we went up there, and we were up there by nine in the morning, uh, half the meat was already gone. People had already been up there. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, like, people had gone up at six in the morning and c- taken their oh, share man. of meat. So, in the fact, there was two people, three people that hadn't even been on the hunt the day before that gone up and got the meat. And th- 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 when what I'm talking about meat, hand. the legs weighed 50 kilos each. Did one person take a leg down? Yes, one leg in each. In a pack? Yes, one leg each. Wow. It was 50 kilos because they weigh, th- they weigh all of it when they get yeah. back. And yeah, so 50 kilos. Like, that's insane. I always find, you know, when I've done photography or filming on trips like that where there's grafting to do, you know, clearly hard work, people are struggling. I mean, normally we're doing a job like you were on this yeah. trip. And I want to be taking the pictures because that's when you get the best pictures. Yeah. But I always have this little bit of me that feels guilty that I'm not helping. Yeah. But I think generally people understand you need to be doing that and you can't do it while you've got a moose leg in one <laughs> arm. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> but it, I still feel a bit bad. You but. do You do feel bad, especially when you're eating the food mm. later as well. And you're like, well, what did I do to to help that? But then again, you were up there the whole time with them Yeah. as well. So, you know, you've done part it's of It's not like you rolled out your bed. No, it's not like you were <laughs> like, oh, just let me know when it was all done. And I'll yeah. come and take a few pictures. You're there the whole time. You're up the same time as them. You, you go to bed at the same time as them. It's just, yeah, okay, the weight thing. But I mean, saying that, you know, you've still got to carry all the camera stuff up Yeah, there, true. Yeah. Which, yeah, okay, it's not 50 kilos, but, but you're, it's, it's still, still weight all, all day long. Well, the because I weighed my camera bag, which would have been a, a little bit l- more than yours because I had all filming gear. Filming gear in it. Uh, but the the cam just the camera bag that I took up in Paul was seventeen and a half because yeah. I had to wait for the helicopter. Yeah, seventeen and a half kilos. And do you think that okay, it wasn't too bad in Norway. Actually, by the second day, I'd actually reduced the amount of water I carried by uh, by a, over half. What were you taking a lot up with? You? I was taking a liter up with me, and then I was also taking a liter thermos with hot water. Uh, so it's two so, kilos. So it's right two there. kilos. Plus the and then by the second day, I was just taking half a liter of water and then the full thermos. And is that I, just because you were filling up on the go? Yeah, I didn't, I didn't know how much water there would actually be because I made that mistake like three weeks <laughs> earlier when I was um, doing a job for um, uh, the hotel Glen Eagles. It was part of. It wasn't actually at Glen Eagles Hotel, but it was. It was part of yeah. a few things going on there. And I made the big mistake of taking a, a water, it wasn't even a big water bottle. And I was like, I'll just fill up on the hill. I did not find one stream the entire day. It, and I was so thirsty. It's funny how that can happen here. We always joke about it being so bloody wet here in Scotland. But I have done exactly that during stag season at Glen Etiv. And some of those hills, although there is water in places, but the actual face of the hill is just barren, barren, barren nothing. No, there was no a few. Water. Mo- by the end of the day, not only was I dreaming about water, <laughs> I was looking at some of the really marshy, boggy <laughs> stuff. And thinking, and thinking, can I drink that? Uh, <laughs> Do you know the worst thing is on that trip that I'm talking about, which is a lot of years ago. I can still remember it now because it was a super hot day, and I was just parched. Nick Latus, who I'm actually going to a party of his in two uh, next weekend, he had like a, a half an inch in the bottom of a water bottle that he gave me which I'm still very thankful for him. But we could hear water, like, down uh, below in the valley. That was even worse. And then there was this one bit that we walked over, and I could hear it in the rocks. Uh, but it was it's, underneath it's us. depressing. It's when you're that thirsty. Uh, I think, you know, when you watch these survival shows and people talk about thirst, I think, like, no one is, like, bullshitting when they say, no. I'm so thirsty. I think the hungry thing, I, I cope with hunger actually remarkably well. You get over it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but the thirst thing... That's yeah. It was. It was I get a headache as well. That's but in Norway, I didn't have that problem. I was fine. There was water and snow everywhere. It was fine. Uh, so yeah, that. Uh, but yeah, so I had the cameras, the water, and also the extra clothing you have to have to carry because you, you need to layer up, layer you, down. Yeah, because I mean, you're walking up in a t-shirt, and then you got to put all your clothes on when you get to the top. Otherwise, you'll freeze to death. And if you sweat as much as I do, you need to take <laughs> spare clothes. Yeah. You have to take spare clothes with you. But yeah, that that, that what an amazing that, experience. That was my week in in basically a, a shortened a shortened version. And the thing is, I, I could go into more depth, but there's stuff coming out. There's pictures to go with there's it. There's a story. So there's going to be an article. Yeah, there's and stories and articles time. and stuff to go with. And yeah, I'm I'm not even a quarter away through the pictures because there was three thousand three hundred pictures taken. So I've got <laughs> a lot to go through, but definitely worth it. What what a trip! Incredible. 
Well, I haven't experienced uh, moose in Norway, so I'm going to have to add that to my my list of experiences for next year. It's so not it's not easy. It's did they so they had two animals left on their quota then? The three, yeah, four, five, yeah, two, two left. Two left. Yeah, so they, I mean, they were going out on the Sunday when I left, so they just keep going. Do so they just keep going? So what would? Do like people not go to work during the week? Or? No, they take two weeks off. Two weeks off to just yeah, hunt. and a lot, a lot of them will take the first week off at least as a bare minimum wow. uh, to hunt. That's brilliant. <laughs> yeah, and I think some of the other people, there's a lot of older guys there uh, and ladies. Uh, that I'm talking about guys. That this is not a guys thing. There was, I was at, amazed at, looking at, at the at pictures. Sometimes there was equal men and women there. It's it, it doesn't matter who you are. There was a pregnant woman that she wasn't actually shooting. But she did a large amount of the walking up and down the the hills. See, I like that. It's not a I'm a female hunter. It's just everybody hunts. Yeah. yeah. There's no distinct, like no di- differentiating. No, no, no. Because like no, every, one, no one cares. Everyone was doing the same jobs. Yeah. No everyone one cares. was doing. No one. It was just you're here. You do. Yeah. You do the. I think to some extent, like here, we make too much of it. Yeah. Whereas there, everyone's the same. Yeah. Everyone literally is equal. You're all there participating, hunting, enjoying the experience. That's that's brilliant. Yeah. I, and I did actually learn something interesting uh, about Lisa, which I didn't know. And I was, she won't be she won't be a one-off either. Is that she took her hunting test, because in Norway you've got to do a test. You've got to do it every year. In school. In high school. No. Yeah. So it was actually uh, an extra... Uh, it wasn't extra curricular. It was a a module that she could take for like out. Uh, it's I think it's they they she they described it as outdoor class. Okay. So it was a uh, it's the same as like picking geography or something. Yeah. You so it was part of the thing. Outdoor got studies. Next year uh, yeah. coming up. What do I want? Yeah, Eight subjects. Outdoor studies. And the hunting test was part of the her outdoor studies. But they said that it's not all schools do that. It has to be. The, the teachers have to have the qualifications. And why are we not doing that here? <laughs> yeah. Can you imagine if we had a situation, Not it doesn't have to be every school, but rural schools at least, you had the opportunity to do something like that. Yeah. Like, I, I, could, I couldn't believe that. I was like, you actually, your school actually put, put you through this. And that's how they, that's how she got her license, effectively. Oh something, something to strive for here in the UK. Yeah. Well, I've actually, I've, not that I don't normally enjoy speaking to you, <laughs> being my brother. Yeah. Uh, but I've, 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 I hope I've, I've not bored anyone. No, no, no my, I've, I've genuinely endo- enjoyed actually hearing about the week. Yeah, um, no, it was, it was good. It was it was a really good week. I enjoy enjoyed myself. I always enjoy going to know. I, I honestly, I would, anyone that is thinking of a destination, where should I go? Norway should be up there. You need to save a little bit of money before you go because it is very expensive. But it is totally worth it. It... Yeah, I haven't been to a bad place yet in Norway no. at all. But you've got to pick your times of year, though, because obviously... Otherwise, you won't see anything because it'll just be dark. No, ge- genuinely, that's... I mean, when I was going on holiday early in the year, I actually delayed it by, like, three months because I was looking at times, and I was like, actually, there's no point going because I actually wanted to go at, like, New Year. And it was going to be pitch black t- for 24 hours. You would be in Norway, but you wouldn't be able to see <laughs> Norway. No, if, you want, if you want that kind of holiday, you can pay us the few hundred pounds, and we'll put a blindfold on you. <laughs> I do it wrong. I mean, the stars and the northern lights oh, will northern be spectacular. Lights, yeah. But yeah, pick your time of year. And also, it's very snowy up north. So if you can't ski, then maybe winter time. There's not a huge amount. Well, uh, there's, there's lots to do, but you need to learn how to cross country ski, which I did do. And I, you enjoyed it, didn't you? Really it was... enjoyed it. Cross country skiing was something I was like, you know what, I I could do more of this. I, I hope we have a proper winter again here, which I, I don't know if you believe the BS that they write in the I don't red top papers. They when, say that when, we're going to have a long winter. They're talking shit. <laughs> <laughs> I hope we have a decent winter because after your experience with the cross-country skiing, it's kind of been on my mind anyway, and then I saw what you had done when you were over, and I was like, and I, I had really a, wanted I had to do a gammy knee yeah. when I did it. I'm going to try and buy some old second-hand cross-country skis. The the key, the thing the thing the only thing I struggled with was going downhill because I'd never skied before, so going down a steep hill was difficult. But actually going up the hill and traveling across snow on the skis for me was fine. I I didn't find any problem with that. Um, we'll see if we have a good winter and whether I, whether it warrants me forking out for some cross country skis. There must be some second hand skis here. I'm sure even ex military ones. Yeah, I've seen them on eBay for not a huge amount of money. Because I mean. I don't know the full difference between cross-country skis and normal skis. I think that it's the width of them is slightly different. I think they're also slightly sprung. 
I, I don't I didn't yeah. notice, but they've got felt on underneath. That's mm. what they do to grip onto the snow as you as you're going. So I, yeah. oh, well, I'm gonna look into it because I'd like to do it this winter. Yeah, we are. My my bees are uh, just on a side note. My bees. every yeah. podcast he mentions his bees. Yeah, that's okay. the the bees, people want to know. We yeah. do actually get messages. We do get the messages. Bees. How's the bees go? Uh, they I'm still feeding them for winter, uh, and they're happy right now. I, I looked inside the hives last uh, at, with the day I got back. In fact, yeah, it was the, uh, the day I got back. And yeah, they're they're very happy inside. They're actually remarkably still bringing stuff in. I know that for some beekeepers that have probably been going for a few years, this is probably not nothing, a surprise. Not a surprise to you, but for me, it's a surprise when you look around. It's it's pretty cold, mm. and they're still going out every day. Little warriors. And I can't believe actually, you know what would be really cool is to get the thermal imaging on them and see how warm the hive is. Well, let's speak to the boys at Scott Country. Yeah, I think we will because when I open the top of it to deal with their feeders you put your hand on the top of the hive, it is warm, warm, mm. warm, warm in, in there. But yeah, it's incredible. That these little insects are creating that amount of heat inside their hive to you know, keep the temperature regulated throughout. They are amazing. Well, I'm sure that everybody has enjoyed that. Uh, thank you very much for listening once again. Don't forget to keep your eye out for our competition to win the CZ um, doormat <laughs> another doormat which will be on social but as we said at the start if you want to win it and you don't use social just please feel free send us an email we'll enter you into the competition um, because it's just going to be a sharing we're just going to ask you to share on social media so it'll be completely randomly selected and I think that's us for another two weeks yeah it is it is two weeks isn't it yes two yeah we're we're, we, we're, we're we're in Ireland week. next week no it's not next week Oh uh, no! Sorry, so not next week. Still, well, I fly out on the the Friday. I'll be and I'll I be fly in out Ireland one day for later. a week. So when this podcast goes out, we'll be in Ireland. No, it won't. So, sorry. When the next <laughs> sorry, when the next podcast yeah, the goes ne- out, we'll be next in Ireland. So we'll out. have to get ahead of ourselves. Yeah, we will. We will. We're and hopefully going to actually. We haven't really talked about that, but we're hopefully going to record some podcast while we're in Ireland. I don't really know who's going to be there apart from my one friend who's organised the whole trip. But I believe a lot of uh, a lot of bloggers and. Uh, various hunters from around Europe. Some pretty cool people are going yeah. to be there, so we should have some good conversations. Yeah, that'll be cool. And hopefully we might be over in the United States. It's looking very likely. Yeah. And and, and I'm talking in the coming weeks. Yeah. But we don't have dates yet and so and it's still kind of being, still up in the air still a little up bit. In the air, but yeah, we're coming. We're coming. Finally. We're finally coming to the United States. So that's going to be exciting because I've never been there. Never I've been never in the been. States. I, I think once we go once, it's going to be more regular than the last 30 years of my life. Which I, I, ho- I hope so. <laughs> I, I really, I think it's going to be fun. And, you know, it's so, such a big place. And I hope that we get to go to, uh, I want to go to New York at some point. See, that just, doesn't, just, doesn't no, do just, just to see it once, to just go once. Why not? Yeah, I mean, no, why? I mean, go through it. Yeah, go through it. Yeah. It's not, it's not I, I, want <laughs> I want a bagel. I want a bagel. I want a bagel. I don't want to see what uh, friends yeah. was made. And I want a hot dog where it's from a dodgy guy on a stand. <laughs> you know, you, you, can't, you can't see friends in New York. Is it not New York? I think it was like filmed in LA. Was it? Okay, yeah. It just shows you how much I know. <laughs> <laughs> like the, I didn't know that. The coffee shop's not even real. It's just I a did set. Know that. I did know that. <laughs> and, and the very last thing I'm going to mention, because we have probably wasted at least a couple of hours since Daryl's come back in the office where we should have been doing oh, real work is the UFC. UFC. Yeah, yeah, you this, yeah, say. Yeah, UFC you know this weekend, Sunday morning for us, sometime 4 in the early hours. 3 a.m., 4 a.m. Conor McGregor against uh, Khabib. I can't say his second name. Khabib, everybody knows <laughs> what I'm talking about. What do you reckon? I don't know. I'm I, trying to decide if I'm going to put a bet on it or not. Uh, I'm, I'm cheeky ten quid I, bet. I am team team Connor. I've always been a big yeah, fan. As I, much I, of a knob as he, he can is, be, he is, he's a really <laughs> complete twat. But I do like his style, and and it it's it's showmanship. It, isn't it? it is. I mean, it it's is business for him. It's business, isn't it? and yeah, it's I, it's going to be an interesting fight. If I if I was pressed into a prediction, I think it's probably going to be very messy. But I think Connor's going to catch him with a punch and knock him out at some point. Yeah, but if it goes to round five, I think he loses. Yeah, Connor loses. You know, yeah, I was trying to think. I was trying to work out. 
if who would win on points. I think just for the pure boxing, if if Connor can stay on his that's feet, he'll he'll win on points. But I don't. I that's one thing I don't know is how do they how do they point score when you're grappling on the ground? No, there is point scoring yeah, for so grappling I don't, I don't for know like how position and control and everything that becomes like that. complicated. Yeah, very complicated. But I don't think Connor's going to want to go to ground with Mm-mm-mm. them. Mm-mm. But I, we've seen it in other fights. If people don't want to go to ground, they can stay on their feet, and he doesn't know what to do. I have faith in him. We'll see. By the time the next podcast comes out, we'll know. Yeah, yeah, we will. He'll either be a champion again, or uh, <laughs> I don't know what he'll be doing. He'll he still be just as rich. Yeah, he's still going to have the hundred million from the Mayweather. Day, <laughs> yeah, so. he's still going to be just as rich, and 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 he's now got our whiskey company. So we need to get some of that whiskey, actually. Can you buy it? I think you can. I think uh, I don't even like whiskey. Our friend sent us. Our friend sent us the link actually, and it is. It's like someone else's whiskey. Yeah, it's Bushmills or something. Yeah, so. rebranded. But <laughs> Bush so, re-branded. So, no, uh, Bushmills. Bushmills. Yeah, I think that's what they. I think uh, that's what Matt said. I think. Yeah, I think it is. So anyway, so if you like the UFC, uh, and we're doing a little bit of promotion for them, and uh, yeah, it, it is on from midnight till 4 a.m. on BT Sport One. That's what we're going to be doing anyway. Or on. Uh, UFC Fight Pass. If you're in the United States, we you know that we, you, you know this. that we're not being paid. To I, know, I, wish we <laughs> I don't think they will ever pay us. They, they're pretty good at promoting themselves. <laughs> they are. Um, yeah, I think that's going to be it. Looking forward to speaking to you all again in two weeks. Yeah.